The Opportunity Corridor overall is a new boulevard running from where 490 used to dead end at East 55th Street, heading kind of easterly through uh, what we called was the Forgotten Triangle. The project incorporated new bridges, new roadway, new signalized intersections, landscaping, aesthetic features such as decorative fence, panels, LED lighting. This was the last leg of the uh, three Opportunity Corridor projects. This was the final tie into 490. This was the one that was going to bring it all together, that was going to make the access to University Circle better than what it was. We, we got the project in October of 17, in which we started the design process. We had substantial completion in October of 31st of 2021 and the project sold for $150 million. The purpose of the project is to use transportation to support economic development in a historically uh, underrepresented, uh, depressed area of the city. It became known as the Forgotten Triangle, and, and what that refers to is a, a triangular area bounded by roadways of, of Wood Hill, Woodland, and Buckeye Roads. It forms a, a triangular shape. The project itself was unique because we incorporated goals never seen before, new to the state of Ohio, uh, as far as I know, new to, uh, new to our country. We had new small local and edge goals on, on the project. We had these in the second section project. We felt that we could do better into the third section, and we did. We, we knew it was 20 percent, but you know, going into the bid, we, we committed just under 30 percent. You find out that these some of these guys really are worth using, and and you have that good relationship with them. And you know, all in all, we ended up just under 42 percent, which is you know a great goal for the team. And hopefully, some a lot of good relationships came out of it. 134 subcontractors, 102 meeting new small local and edge goals. What what this meant for not only ODOT, Kokosing, the community, um, you were seeing more firms who had never done work with ODOT before, firms who had never done business with either Kokosing or Michael Baker, local firms from, from the, the community working on this project. As the lead design firm, we actually incorporated 15 sub-consultants as part of our team, and we actually had agreed or committed to Kokosing that we would meet the same goals that they met on the construction side of things. So we hit the percentages and the counts for each of the classifications. We wanted to see the design build team perform some community service, community outreach uh, in the neighborhood. We were starting demolition on the job. We had these big, ugly, fences everywhere. A thought came into mind where we would do these decorative art panels. So from that kind of spurred the thought that we would reach out to the Boys and Girls Club. We went there, Carrie Hart and myself, we gave a presentation to the Boys and Girls Club of what the Opportunity Corridor is, what this means for your neighborhood. From there we asked the kids to paint these big plywood panels with what the corridor means to them and their families in this neighborhood. About a month later, we came back and the kids all had these fantastic panels presented to us and they got to tell us their story of what these panels, this artwork meant to them, what this project meant to them. And uh, it was really heartfelt. It was really like touching to see that these little kids really thought hard about what this means for their future. Executing this project was a daily difficult task. The biggest issue I think we faced was keeping the project on schedule. Right off the rip when the offers submitted their um, proposals, all three offers came in with a proposal of grade coming into the Opportunity Corridor off of 490. The uh, grade was pretty steep, but that was in line with scope documents, design documents. It wasn't beneficial for uh, the city, for the department to have such a steep slope for this boulevard, it was never our intention. We had to mitigate those delays. We did that through a variety of methods. We combined phases. We moved contractual milestone dates. We accelerated a portion of the project. And all those together were successful. We hit our main goal of the substantial completion date and opening to traffic within two weeks of the original date. So we had a facilitated partnering, and it was one of the first things we did as a team together. It was a daily effort with Kokosing, top down, everybody was involved, to get a quality product and work out issues that we inevitably hit. But right out of the gate, 
we learned about each other, had a good understanding of how, how things needed to happen to keep the job moving. So it, it, it turned out to be a great experience with a lot of great help from ODOT. Whenever an issue did come up, we were, we were very proactive at um, writing all these early written notices. Uh, we wrote 34, I believe, on this project. Nobody took it personally. It was, it was just part of the contract, something we have to do. We did take a few to the DRB for an advisory opinion. It was very needed for, for some things, but the team just got through it and kept moving. The co-locating inside the same office at first seemed a bit daunting. It seemed like this is going to be a lot to take in with all the designers and everybody there, but I wouldn't do it any other way. Sharing the same space made a big difference for us too. On the field side especially, uh, being able to just go look at something, ask questions, having the same office was a big help. Same thing with the designers. Michael Baker was there early on all the way through 90% of the design and being able to work shoulder to shoulder with them as they asked us questions on constructability, what we wanted to see, it, it, was, it was good to be able to have those candid conversations. The utilities were a huge obstacle on the project and Kokosing really did a great job working with them. We had 23 different utility companies that were on this project that we had to coordinate you know and with the 11 intersections that we had to build and and get stuff removed and put back into place. I mean, we had 600, just under 600 known utility conflicts that we had to deal with. Anytime you're getting into working in, inside the city's limits, utilities is always a concern. Uh, there's always unknowns. This is, this is probably one that had the most relocations, you know, that went with the job that I've, that I've had to deal with. East 55th Street is one of the oldest roads in Cleveland, and it had every utility that we're able to have in there. In fact, it had the sludge force main, which we don't run into very often. But on top of the utilities were also buried trolley tracks. You know, that's how old 55th Street was. So uh, as Brad was getting into the construction of it, they would find new things all the time, and we just worked through it as best we could. Coordination with the, with the two railroads on the job, uh, GCRTA and Norfolk Southern, was tough at times. Uh, Folk Southern was a big part of the job because they had to move their tracks so that we could do our work. So coordinating with them was difficult and, and the design build team did a great job getting that done. RTA, same thing, we, you know, they're overhead powered, cantonary system. That, another set of challenges, you had to build protective structures over them and make sure they approved them and grounded properly. And, a lot of wrinkles that aren't on normal projects. The, the ultimate goal was to get OC3 open. So with that being the case, you know, get with the weather being the way it was, you know, we had to come up with an idea on how can we pave <laughs> in, in colder temperatures. So that additive has been used before. It wasn't allowed in the scope, but we, you know, obviously we had to get together with, with ODOT and talk about, is this a possibility? Everybody agreed on it to do it. We started using it. And, and it got us over the finish line to get past November 1st. Environmental was more than anyone could have ever thought of. It's hard to put a bucket in the ground in this area without running into something. We ran into countless USTs, underground storage tanks. It, it was just over $2 million of, of extra regulated materials that needed to be removed. So there's just no way to know that until you start getting in the ground and start seeing signs of that stuff. So it was tested and, and taken care of. I don't know how anybody can go into any job, whether it's a big one or, or a little one, and not think that partnering is, is needed. The communication needs to be there uh, every day at the field level, at the management level, at the executive level. If you're not doing that, the project's not going to be successful. I think partnering's a must on a project. The biggest thing there, you got to have open communication. It's got to happen early and don't take it personal. It's a hard balance, but you have to work together to try and get that done. And I don't know how you can build any construction project without a common goal in mind. 